Hi there, it's John from Fantastic Tales and Adventures here. You're very welcome today. So, this channel has been operational for a month now, and I'm just beginning to appreciate how much effort YouTubers have to put in to get a decent quality video, even one as low-tech as mine are. Anyway, today's episode is what I call a roundup. Basically, think of it as a video blog of everything I've been doing over the last month, besides making YouTube broadcasts. It is to give you a bit of a chance to see beyond my fiction, my thoughts on storytelling. In an ideal world, this would be free-flowing and unscripted. However, I'm no actor, and I have noticed from many, many hours of recording these clips that if I don't have the words in front of me, I tend to um and ah a lot. So, until I can train myself not to do that, scripted is what you get. So, this month I've been learning to make YouTube videos. There are four preceding this one, and I'll pop the links for them all on screen in case you're curious about them. There is an introduction to the channel, a discussion and dealing with the empty page, uh, which is also a useful video for getting you warmed up, a short story called Voices, with some questions posed about it to get you thinking, and a video on editing. That's all I'm going to say on them just now, you can click on the links and each video is quite short anyway. Now, I was intending to do the videos in a slightly different style, using a camera and a tripod to record me sitting in a chair and talk directly to the camera, uh, sort of like Ronnie Corbett's uh, last jokes in The Two Ronnies. Uh, however, I don't have a decent video camera or a tripod, and I feel you deserve better than shaky cam, so I opted to use my webcam on my laptop. One of my friends fed back to me they quite like the style in terms of just having my face in a sort of dark window in a corner of the video, as it made it look a little bit spooky and a little bit like a storyteller. I'm curious what other people think about that. I'm doing the editing using the Coral Video Studio X9 suite, which I'd never used before and only have access to just now because I got it on Amazon Prime Day earlier this year quite cheap. It's pretty good as video editing goes. I'm not able to do all the stuff with it that I used to do with Sony Vegas, uh, which is probably more uh, my fault than the software. Um, fortunately, I'm not making motion pictures here, so it's all good enough. This is all self-taught, and I say this to explain the production quality, but also to explain a, an ethos of mine. I firmly believe that people become the best version of themselves when they are happy and when they continue to learn. So, I'm doing stuff that makes me happy, and I continue to learn. On that note, I read a blog this week, which I'll link in the description, about speed reading. As a result of that, I started looking at a piece of software called Spreeder, uh, which I've been using to train myself to read faster without loss of comprehension. Spreeder, which I'm not affiliated with, has courses built into it that train you out of bad habits in reading that slow you down. After using it for about half an hour, my reading speed had increased from 250 words per minute up to 285, though I did peak at 335. This is quite handy, as if you look at the wallpaper on this video or my Facebook page, I have a lot of books, many of which haven't been read as they are parts of series that I started before going to university, and then don't, did not read whilst at university. My current reading target is 600 words per minute. I think that's going to take a little while, but I gather from the blog that it's not an unreasonable target to achieve with practice. I encourage you to check out the blog, and if you have lots to read, finding a piece of software to help you train to, in speed reading is not a bad idea either. Speaking of reading, I've currently been reading Gardens of the Moon by Stephen Erickson, which is the first Malazan book of the Fallen. It is a high fantasy novel, and this is my third reading of it, as I have never completed the series. There's ten books in total. This is due to the fact that it was not complete before I went to university, and then at university I had other books to read. So I'm back, determined to finish it this time. It is an immensely enjoyable story. Very dense, very gritty, uh, has very interesting characters in a world where gods and wizards walk the, walking the earth is common. Maybe less so common for the gods, but only by a little bit. The characters are gritty and felt quite realistic to me. Uh, the story was more about politics and empire than magic and the gods, and that made it feel even more realistic. I thoroughly recommend the book for someone looking for a deep piece of fiction, but be wary, it isn't light, it's not an easy read, but it is worth your time. Next, when I've been out and about this month, I visited Lancaster to perform some one-minute monologues as part of a competition run by Atticus Books there. I wasn't a contestant as such, merely a performer, as volunteered by a former tutor of mine. 
It was a good event at the library in Lancaster where 27 monologues altogether were read out. I read out three of them. Uh, I will be visiting Atticus Books again in the future about running some form of event there, but we're fairly early days on that at this point. I also paid a visit to Carlisle a few times over the last fortnight, helping at the University of Cumbria's Freshers events promoting student group activity. Not strictly writing or storytelling related, but something quite dear to me as membership in such groups at university are one of the various ways that you get the best out of your time there. Plus, since it was for the games club, it was quite fun for me. And as I said earlier, you become the best version of yourself when you're having fun and learning. And this is the having fun part for me. And finally, stuff I have written. I've been working on my first major piece this last month and I've gotten a reasonable way into the first draft. Admittedly, I had a bit of a setback at the beginning when I wrote the first draft of the prologue and decided it wasn't good enough and abandoned it entirely, forcing a rewrite. Um, I wrote a blog about that a couple of weeks back. I feel it's important to bring that up as I've known people who were not willing to edit their work and certainly not on chopping thousands of words out of it. I learned early on if something doesn't work, it doesn't matter if it's thousands of words. You get rid of it. For me, 3,000 words is a few hours' work. I'd rather redo those words and lose the initial hours than leave something that I know to be of poor quality. And besides, no writing is ever wasted. Even if you don't ultimately use it, you're warming your brain up for the next page and the next page. Good news is, I've been happy uh, with everything I've written since then. That isn't to say that it's perfect, but what I'm writing feels correct. I'm also liking the various characters that I've created for this story starting to come, in come to life through their interactions with each other, not all of which have been entirely expected. Anyway, that is what I've been spending the last month doing. Also a few other bits and pieces just to get started here and to get things moving on the channel, my blog and Facebook. Don't forget, uh, you can give me a like and subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed it. And the next video is going to be about giving feedback. A link is on screen just now. And don't forget you can support this channel if it has been of use to you. All the best to you. Happy writing!